This pumpkin spice drink here is really itching to scratch. I've drank this all in 24 hours. Oh, what have you had in your coffee? Hello everyone, I hope we're all doing really well. I thought it would be really fun today to dish some influencer tea. A little bit of background, history, information, context. I started making YouTube videos when I was 12 years old. It became my job when I was 17. I left the college I was at at the time to start doing it full time. I'm now 22 years old and I feel like I've had a lot of experience and met a lot of people. And it's something I've never really spoken about in depth or sort of dish the dirt I guess and it's something I also always get questions on this is essentially the say it or shot it but just oh my god a spooky goal essentially a say it or shot it without the shots because we're going to be answering everything today this video could ruffle a few feathers so please give it a thumbs up for my sake and you can also subscribe to my channel I'm currently in the process of moving into my dream home I spent over 100 pounds on boxes and tape last night Joe and the juices have also gone up to nine pounds on delivery I asked you guys for questions on my Instagram a lot of them were on the same topic this is going to probably be a very lengthy chatty video but I've actually made a notes list compiling your questions and the topics I'm going to talk about such as why I don't go to events, bad encounters I've had with other people, <sighs> the money side, how much money people are, dating in the influencer scene, and in fact I think I'm going to start off with that. Dating with a following is something I don't think I've ever really thought about, and it's a bit of a double-edged sword because if you go into something thinking, oh my gosh, they're just with me for followers, etc, etc, then you're gonna kind of build yourself a little bit of a weird ego and become quite an unlikable person. It's similar with friendships. I've never considered it in friendships. It has a couple of times made itself a little bit apparent that maybe someone's more interested in either my online presence or just money, like having money has been a thing i'm so sorry but there's just no way she's going to be going down this video being on social media it's near impossible to sort of hide your success and also with the information out there i feel like people if they really want to they could take a look through your account and sort of work out the sort of money you're going to be on i think for me i'd like to think bar a few obviously i'm a very good judge of character and i also just feel really lucky to say that i actually haven't experienced anything too terrible i have experienced like multiple men back when i would be dating i can't even call them men like boys just use it as like a sarky sort of piss take thing and it's just not funny like it, it's just not funny like do you think i haven't grown up with years of that i don't find you funny i get it's like something new for them and it's just something to poke fun at and there's literally it's just harmless comments but it's just annoying yeah it's anyway have i had any bad encounters with influencers and a lot of people asking about love island crew i can kind of guess why because there's a lot circling around about that some love islanders different breed i like everyone else have seen the tiktoks and this scandal circulating around mitch and zach like let's not sugarcoat it because everyone knows who they are i want to say i think mitch's apology was bullshit it started off with i'm getting all this hay i think maybe take a step back and realize where this microaggressive behavior is coming from especially in a setting that you are very new to and you should be walking in with so much respect for the people around you because they're gonna be your future colleagues essentially i've had one bad experience with a influencer slash love islander the first time i meet this girl i go over to her friend who was like a mutual friend of ours and she looks so different from like when she was on the tv y you just would not recognize her i go over to my friend i give him a hug this was years ago like at a party i was like oh my gosh hey so good to see you and i go to give her a hug and she just so kind of shoves me off which that's fine, like not everyone wants to hug, but obviously it was a bit of awkward vibes, I felt a bit embarrassed. Anyway, introduce myself, ask for her name. <laughs> Nothing. Oh my god, it makes me cringe in my skin when I think about it. I'm such like a, oh, like people please a person too. I was fucking panicking. I was like, what have I done? What have I done? Anyway, I don't see her for the rest of the night. I then see her out again. She acts like she's never seen me in her life. Introduces herself. I'm with a friend who also knows her. And she's going, oh, you're gorgeous, you're gorgeous, look at you, look at you, you gorgeous girl, gorgeous girl. And I was like, this is weird because you literally threw me into the next room first time I saw you. Fast forward, like, I don't know, another month later, I'm at my own 
fucking friend's house party. She doesn't know this girl. I just want to add in another element to the story here because I've just remembered it whilst I'm editing. So basically, the friend's house we were at, we were at Kate's house, Kate Elizabeth, and she walks in. It's like all Kate's uni friends. So we got, you know, bottles of vodka everywhere, whatever, all the spirits. She walks in and makes the biggest deal that there's no rosé or like white wine. Like a huge deal. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but get your head out of your ass cheeks. I'm coming to the real world for a second. You're walking into a party full of like feral 19, 20 year olds. What are you expecting? I'm at her house party and I need to go into the bathroom and she's like talking to her man or whatever in the hallway and she's leant against the bathroom door and I'm like, oh, sorry, can I get through? Look, I'm starting to question if this girl just lights on no one home because she just stands in front of the door and smirks at me i don't get it i don't she just smirks at me as if like a, mm -hmm. you want to go in the bathroom will you um, like what sorry you ain't no molly may okay Let's bring ourselves back to work and humble ourselves it was so weird and rude and unnecessary and i still can't wrap my head around it and i still can't wrap my head around if she knew what she was doing but she had to know what she was doing it was multiple consistent times she was strange i mean we'll just park it at that but love island season Three or four? I don't know. Do the math. Next question slash topic is why don't you go to events anymore? And I don't think this is entirely true. I still do go to some events, but it's definitely select few. I'd say one a month at most. I think because I've been doing this for so long, A, they sort of lose their novelty, and B, oh, the sun. Please. Oh. There used to be a lot less influencers and it was all just kind of YouTubers which meant the circles were a lot smaller. I don't know if any of you guys were around for like summer in the city days, if you were, oh my goodness. What a very back, you know, beauty con and big beauty day out, got that one. That one caused quite the controversy, didn't it? Even just brand events, everyone knew each other and I don't know, it also felt like such a big achievement because you would be a micro influencer, creator, I guess, in a room with someone you aspire to. Like you could be in the same room as, oh, okay, look, enough is enough. You could be in the same room as like Zoella, Tanya Burr, because there just weren't many people and it just had this huge appeal because it felt like this small exclusive thing this is not me slandering the fact that there are more people at all like I understand I was kind of like in a new wave I guess of people being online for like everyone knows that OGs is just like Marcus, Zoe, Casper, Alfie, Tanya, the whole shebang. I used to have the balls to turn up to an event alone because I knew that I would meet someone there that I know and there have been so many times where I've gone and there is just not a single face in the room that I recognize once again not a bad thing it's just how it is. With TikTok being a thing anyone can monetize therefore everyone is like relevant to brands and brands can work with so many different people which is why the whole circle is bigger i'm also just not as social as i used to be i've said this before but i just like my alone time and also i would just drink a lot when i went to events and that's something that i've really moved away from like drinking and partying as much i will only go to events these days if it's like a brand i'm really really excited about and all or if I have the time or if or even if I just have the time like I can leave her alone for a bit I haven't got anything urgent I need to do in the morning I'm actually going to a Killian and a GHD event really really soon which I'm so excited for Killian is like one of the brands where it's just such like a pinch me moment I'm so obsessed with them and anytime I get gifting or invited to one of their events I think on my behalf I need to get better at networking with the people at these events because that's like one of the, the most important things to do one of the reasons you're there i'm just fucking shy and i need someone to introduce me because i always feel like i'm going up and being annoying to them when it's not being annoying because i don't know what they're there to do but you know what i mean it feels like justin bieber's in a room and you're going up like can i get a picture it's that kind of energy but it's not anyway why don't you have any influencer friends slash you fall out with them <laughs> here we go i do have my influencer friends we're just kind of all over the place basically and we're all going in different directions i have a great group of friends in london which is like millie Carmi. yes we don't see each other so much but we'll always be friends there's like a deeper rooted friendship to seeing each other all the time and i also think it's really nice that we all know that we're on the same page i said to Carmi because i couldn't go away for his birthday that i'm like desperate to see them when they come back especially because millie's moving to la i also do just have like sort of acquaintance social friends where i will see them at an event and it's so exciting and it's so lovely yes obviously can't sugarcoat it obviously i have fallen out with people but it's not even like 
oh my god you fall out with people through life and it's there's no difference just because we are doing a job we do or like we're online it's just the only difference is there's more people watching and more people asking which i 210 percent understand i am like that i want to know what happened between louise and zoella you know what i mean like we all do but there's a time and a place and i will never go on and like trash talk people that i you know would sit and tell all my secrets to and have so much fun with and there's always laugh there like there always will be this is i'm fucking going on the weirdest tangent like this is not relevant yes you fall out with people online and yes people change like people change through life and people change through having everyone say yes to them all the time i'm not perfect nobody else is there's just a million well not a million i wish there was a million there's a lot of eyes in on it and that's why it seems like this huge great big deal and it's really not you move on with your life it's calm you know what I mean? I've put here like a general topic of body image. People say, did it trigger any past eating disorder behaviors slash how did it make you feel moving to London? This was a huge thing. Moving to London was like one of the biggest, I would say humbling, but not honestly not like the biggest confidence knock I think I've ever had in my life. I was moving here 19 years old and hanging around women in their mid twenties. And obviously I didn't look like them and I would make friends with them. And then I was also around men in their mid twenties, even to thirties, I'd say like in the clubs I was going to. And I was always the girl who was like, Hey, like they come up and talk to me and they'd be like, will you put in a good word with your friend? Oh, ah, I mean, I didn't fancy them, but it's just like, oh my God, like, oh my God, am I really that fucking hideous? I honestly never felt ugly when I lived back in the Cotswold. When you come to London, being attractive gets you places, which, you know, when you're going to nice places full of well-paying men, why do you think there's going to be a lot of attractive girls there? You know what I mean? Like, let's do the math. Let's put it together. I felt so shit about myself and honestly i still can't say that i feel good about myself like i feel like especially recently i don't know what's in the air but i've been rinsing myself like absolutely fucking picking apart every single part of me and no matter how many animal beauty speeches i listen to i'm still gonna see that one girl on tiktok that makes me sit in front of the mirror and literally like pull my face in every single different direction and wonder how I could look better. Something that's really helped me is like nailing it down to the fact that I've got it so in my brain that looking a certain way and being deemed attractive will get me further and get me places and it's so fucked. I'm also the biggest believer that confidence is everything and the times where like I have been the most successful and I have been the most happy it's just been the times that I've been the most confident and I haven't even thought about it. The days I've had the best days is when I just get a call from my friends and I run out of the house and I'm in whatever clothes I'm already wearing. I feel like with girls moving off to uni and just getting out of like your little bubble of you know familiarity and being comfortable like there is always going to be someone prettier in the room there's always going to be someone smarter there's always going to be someone you think is funnier there's always going to be someone you think is more confident all you can do is just like be the best version of you and if you don't feel that that is so okay there's this ginormous pressure to just love every single inch of you and i'm 22 years old <laughs> This is really young. Oh my god, thirsty work going on. Self-love tangent. You don't have to love everything. You just have to accept and be neutral. I want to bring a neutrality movement forward. Enjoy the days that you do feel sexy, but let's be honest, like... I honestly think 50% of the time, maybe if not more. We don't feel like that, and that is fine, because you're not on this earth to sit and look pretty. In terms of the eating disorder question, I mean, this one's a little deep, but I think obviously it definitely did trigger some stuff i wanted to just be the fucking thinnest i can be and those thoughts still sit in my head i feel like they sit in so many people's heads and even in boys heads like boys have want to be big and shredded and muscly but it just relates back to the thing of like we condition ourselves to believe that it's going to open more doors for us when it won't it might open doors but are they really the ones you want sat on a man's club table yeah that's a fun friday night but you know at the sacrifice of your mental health I'll leave that one with you. How much money do you earn? <laughs> Let me get up my bag. Do you know, obviously fucking not. I will say something as a ground fact. Okay, this is a fact. People who work online and can do it well and have good engagement, you will earn a lot of money. <gasps> oh my God. Why do I feel like everyone's gonna come in for my fucking neck? Do you get absolutely clawed to the ground? People trying to drag you to the deepest, the hottest depths of hell for that 
oh my god yeah even people in your own life like people who can't be happy for you or there's this underlying jealousy i feel so fucking lucky like i wake up every single day and i feel so lucky i'm not a bad person i'm not a mean person i think i'm a good person and i share my money with the people i love and i invest it into things and myself and my future do people want me to just say no like if i get offered an amazing deal with a brand that i want to work with of course i'm gonna take it just because i'm not sat in an office nine to five like every single day doesn't mean that i don't work and it doesn't mean that i don't like put effort in i also was doing it i was also doing it for five or six years for free like i was making videos consistently uploading like building a channel to earn this money for five or six years for free like it's not just some big overnight thing it really bugs me it's hard to talk about because i'm not gonna sit here and be like i work so hard because i don't like i don't think i do you know there's nurses and people and doctors and teachers even people sat in the sainsbury's down there who will be in there every single day working and i don't have to do that i have a really lucky amazing life like yes i have times i'm really busy yes i have times i feel stressed i feel like a little bit overwhelmed with everything but day to day i don't i don't sit at my laptop from nine to five that was not a life i wanted which was why i chased this so hard and like i pursued this so hard with every single inch of me i made so many sacrifices for this career that i have now i feel so lucky and so blessed to be financially independent and earning the money i'm earning don't get me wrong i'm not on millions i wish i was but i'm not just yet but at the same time i'm also not going to feel bad for it it's allowed me to look after myself without you know having to take money from my family it's allowed me to be happy it's opened so many doors for me and i did it myself and also i truly believe this if you want something and you fully believe you can do it like it's there yours for the taking spend 5 10 i don't care 15 years trying to do it if you know deep down like it's meant for you it will happen i've got a few more questions that i'm gonna address but in more sort of like a tangenty way someone said is it hard feeling like you can never voice your opinions i don't think it's hard but it's definitely like a slip up thing people think when you air an opinion you're the one who started it and i also think it's actually really dangerous to shut down other people's opinions in a way i'm not talking anything human rights related here like anything racially or anything about sexuality i just completely want to clarify that that is a whole separate thing and there is a definite right and wrong with that i think it's dangerous to shut down other people's opinions because it just drives people into sort of aggressive states of extremism i want to say if someone feels like they can't be heard or they can't feel their own type of way about something and um, maybe they feel like that over a lot of things like it will just sort of breed underground i guess and especially with social media people will seek out like-minded people online and that's where you get like access to really scary dangerous groups of people who fucking hate everything and everyone opinions are definitely entitled and even opinions I get people blasting their opinions of me at me all the time but then god forbid you know i give one that they don't like it's like you know i didn't think it would ruffle you up that way and also anytime i say something i think because people are watching me so much and they know me they can feel like i've really let them down when realistically i don't know you and i would never say that to your face if i knew it was going to upset you but i'm just talking generally like i'm kind of just i'm talking to myself here like look at what i'm looking at there's nobody there that's my stance on that i hope that made sense a lot of people talking about being relevant staying relevant it's definitely scary like look i know you know i don't have like wool over my eyes i can see i'm not the it girl i used to be <laughs> why does it feel like i'm self-deprecating i'm not self-deprecating but when i was in my peak like a couple years back i knew i was in my peak like i knew i wasn't being naive to it for me all that matters online is that i'm happy is that i'm being heard the way i want to be heard i'm being true to myself i'm still making stuff i enjoy i'm still getting the reception and the feedback from you guys i'm like making you happy and delivering stuff that you want to see also that i'm just documenting my life like that's what this has always always been you know it's just it started as fun and it will forever be for that all that matters to me is that i'm still able to make like my income from it and i'm still able to be comfortable and i'm still able to be earning the same money which i am so 
there's no problems for me i wrote if you're private you're boring and if you're open you're judged i think i've been so open in the past and i don't regret it but i do regret giving certain people like even the airtime when things don't work out or you know a fallout or whatever it's everywhere but then if you keep something private you're not going to get the engagement on your life because your whole career and your success is like based off of how open you can be the same talking about my mental health like doing that was so great and i've connected with so many people through doing that and it's also helped me so much and it's been i don't know i think it's quite like i don't want to say beautiful because it was not fucking beautiful but it's quite moving even for me to like go back and see the change and the development in myself through that and i hope also now that i am happy other people can watch that journey or see that journey or have followed me along and if you're not there yet it will give you some hope that you will be but once again i open myself up to the opinions and views and diagnoses of you know everyone under the sun the only way to go into it and sort of overcome it is to just not care and also not give in to pressure that you don't want to give in to moving forward i will continue to be really open because it works for me and i'm okay with it and the pros definitely like outweigh the cons i think i've got such a thick skin on me these days honestly it really takes a lot and that was not an invite but it takes a lot to get to me <coughs> Did you hear that? I don't think there's anything else I want to say. I feel like I've really boshed this out. I've only been sat down for about 30 minutes, but I've been non-stop talking. My mouth is so dry. Along the theme of YouTube work, I actually have a couple ads to shoot now. So if you want to go see those, you can follow me on my Instagram here and also my TikTok here. I love you all so much. Thank you so much if you have been on this big long journey with me and i hope i dished some dirt bought some tea i don't know this could be fun you could hate it if you did like it once again please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel i am moving on monday in six days and i have done absolutely nothing and haven't even contacted removal men well actually that's a lie i like went onto this website last night where you can see loads of different removal men gave them my number Oh my god, Miss Popular this morning. I've had about 25 missed calls from random removal companies and I ain't picking those up. Like, I can hardly even pick up the phone to one of my friends. You know what I mean? I love you all so much. I hope you're having the best week ever. If you're not, I'm sending you so much love, hugs, kisses, and I'm praying that it will get better for you. I'll see you very soon. Bye. I was looking at my eyebrows. Look at what we wrap. Bye.